Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parables of Jesus, which are contained in the Gospels. And this week, the parable of the sower. Variations on this parable are found in all three of the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And he spoke to them many things in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow, and whilst he soweth, some fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and ate them up. Matthew 13, 3-4 Hear ye, behold, the sower went out to sow, and whilst he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and ate it up. Mark 4, 3-4 The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Luke 8, 5. Very similar, but the Gospel of Luke tells us one thing the other two don't about this seed, that it wasn't even noticed by people and was stepped on. According to the interpretation of this parable that Jesus gives afterwards, the sower is God and the seed is his word. He says that the birds represent the devil who takes the word out of the hearts of people, but we know the devil doesn't have the power to remove people's free will. So what does this line about the devil mean? Taken in the context of the other dangers that Jesus describes, it seems that what Jesus is calling the devil here implies any serious deception that people can be mired in. The devil, after all, is the father of lies, John 8.44, and lies are the quickest and easiest way to remove the word of God from people's thoughts. The best way to resist being this kind of seed, therefore, is to frequently read the Bible, attend Mass, and reflect on the word of God and how it applies to our own actions. And other some fell upon stony ground, where they had not much earth, and they sprung up immediately, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Matthew thirteen five to 6 And other some fell upon stony ground, where it had not much earth, and it shot up immediately, because it had no depth of earth. And when the sun was risen, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Mark 4 5 to 6. And other some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Luke 8 6. According to Jesus, the seeds that fall on rock are people who receive the message of God joyfully enough until suffering and temptations come along and then they turn away from God. It seems that they don't just sin either, but that they don't bother seeking forgiveness after having sinned. We all have experienced sinning in hard or tempting times and forgetting about the long game until later. But the important thing is that we then seek forgiveness and try sincerely not to do it again. If we do that, we don't have to shrivel like the seeds in this part of the parable do. People of this type can have all sorts of motives for turning away when faced with challenges. Maybe they don't have much self-control and don't want to bother developing it. Maybe they're addicted to sins of a certain type and don't feel sufficiently motivated to change their ways. Maybe they just don't trust God enough. However, I think one major reason this may happen is that people don't feel they should experience suffering, and they blame that suffering on God rather than seeing it as a necessary part of the work of salvation. In any case, we can avoid falling into this category of seeds by keeping the end goal of heaven and eternal happiness in mind, and never forgetting that all of the suffering of life is only temporary, and that anything that ends can be lived through. And others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Matthew thirteen seven, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Mark 4, 7 and other some fell among thorns, and the thorns growing up with it choked it. Luke 8, 7 In this parable, the thorns represent the concerns, riches, and pleasures of earthly life. People get caught up in those kinds of concerns, and as a result, they don't accomplish what they could if they stop to consider what God wants of them. This is one reason why it's so helpful to put our relationship with God first. If we only focus on our earthly concerns, we won't make plans for how to do God's will in our lives, and sooner or later we'll get sidetracked by sin. And others fell upon good ground, and they brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Matthew thirteen eight, And some fell upon good ground, and brought forth fruit that grew up, and increased and yielded one thirty, another sixty, and another a hundred. Mark four eight. 
and other some fell upon good ground, and being sprung up, yielded fruit a hundredfold. Saying these things, he cried out, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Luke 8, 8. These, of course, are people who receive God's word honestly, staying faithful and patient even in hard times. There are big rewards in store for these seeds. The image of a sower of seeds would have been a common and understandable one in the days of the apostles, and even today it's not too far removed from modern life, since many people who don't farm for food do so as a hobby. Unless you're incredibly careful, some of that seed often goes where you don't want it to go, and the wind can blow it all sorts of places it's not intended to be. Not all the seeds can be saved when there are factors you just can't control, and if God could control free will, it wouldn't really be free. This parable, therefore, is largely a warning about the many ways that people can go astray, and what to watch out for in order to avoid them. Next, more seed parables and the kingdom of heaven. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.